We start with some developing reports from Gaza. The Hamas-run health ministry in the territory has accused Israel of carrying out deadly, a deadly airstrike on Saturday night. A ministry spokesman said more than 30 people were killed in the bombardment on the refugee camp at Magazi in the central Gaza Strip. An Israeli military spokesperson said they were looking into whether their forces had been operating in the area. Hamas is classed as a terrorist organization by several Western governments. These are some of the latest images we've received or overnight. You can see massive explosions over northern Gaza, as seen from the Israeli city of Siderot. The United Nations says there are now 1.5 million people displaced in Gaza. More than 700,000 are reported to be sheltering in UN facilities. It warns its sites in the south of the territory are now over capacity, and that's causing severe health and protection risks for that group of displaced people. So let's show you these live pictures over from Israel looking into Gaza this morning. Um, and these are the images that we've been seeing, and this would be now a familiar picture for a lot of our viewers. And as we mentioned there, there have been continued strikes in Gaza overnight by the Israeli military. Now, we'll have more on the diplomatic efforts to end the conflict in the moment. But first, we have this report from Mark Lowen. Night brings no peace to the purgatory of Gaza. Infernos light the skies as Israel pounds from the air. Palestinians say an Israeli strike hit a refugee camp in central Gaza late on Saturday, killing at least 30. Israel says it is looking into the reports. But night brings out anguish on the other side too. In Tel Aviv, loved ones of the more than 240 hostages seized by Hamas on the 7th of October demand their return. One missing chair for each empty soul. Israel says bringing home the hostages is a priority, but so is destroying Hamas. Are the twin aims compatible? I don't want the country to bring back only a few. Two here, two there. Only those who have foreign citizenship. There is no difference between one life and another. They are all Israelis there, all citizens there. I can't remember how many nights I've slept, and I don't know how many meals I've had. I've been awake for one long day since October 7th. That's it, and I'm doing everything I can to try and bring attention to this terrible and insane situation we're going through. Amidst the suffering, the U.S. Secretary of State is shuttling around the region, trying somehow to mediate. Arab leaders pushed him for an immediate ceasefire call. He pushed back, saying Hamas could regroup. But he is urging Israel for short pauses for aid delivery. His boss certainly thinks there's movement on that. Mr. President, any progress on the humanitarian pause? Yes. A rare glimmer of optimism, even if Israel's prime minister has so far said no. And there might be some hope, too, on fuel into Gaza, with reports that Israel has told the U.S. there's a mechanism to deliver it once hospitals start to run out. But for those who have lost everything, family, livelihoods, it's scant comfort. The U.N. says nearly one and a half million Gazans are displaced since the start of this war, half of whom are sheltering in its camps. All the homes have gone, says Hoda. Mine fell on top of me. My daughter, the flower of our household, died. We came here to live humiliated in tents, with no water, food, and just the clothes we were wearing. Each generation here knows a conflict that is decades old and has now flared up again, stealing lives, hope, their future. Mark Lowen, BBC News, Jerusalem. And just a reminder that for all the latest updates, the BBC has a, a live page on bbcnews.com. And this live page really has analysis reports from all our journalists there in the region. And I'd like to just point you to one piece of analysis by Nathan Williams. Um, he says he's talking about the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken's ongoing visits in 
the Middle East. This is going to be a major focus for, t for today because he's left Jordan and now he's gone to Turkey and the Turkish um, president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has been far more critical than many about Israel's continued um, military operations in Gaza. And so that's the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is going to be going to Turkey today to hold talks with officials there, including President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. So follow developments there on the BBC website. Now, let's go live to Mark Lowen, our correspondent in Jerusalem. Mark, let's just start with the top story today, which is this strike on the Magazi refugee camp. Hamas uh, officials saying that it was Israel behind this attack, but Israel saying it's still looking into what happened. Yeah, and it, and it seems really that there is no place of refuge now in Gaza, Catherine. Um, there have been almost daily reports of attacks on um, areas close to hospitals or schools or refugee camps. Israel maintains that each attack, each strike is precision, precision, precision targeted um, against a, a, a Hamas terror cell that is operating or it's or has 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 uh, its officials and its fighters close to where it is where where the hit is coming but of course the uh, on the Hamas side they are saying that this is uh, civilians who are being hit and civilian areas that are being hit and once again um, a refugee camp here is the focus of that dispute um, with the Palestinians saying that more than 30 civilians have been killed and Israel now saying they're looking into whether their forces whether their um, fighters or whether their, their their drones were were hitting that area and why they would have been hitting that area um, uh, the, the, the suffering, of course, continues. The Hamas uh, health, uh, Hamas-led health uh, um, health ministry now saying that close to nine and a half thousand people have died uh, in Gaza since the offensive began on the seventh of October, uh, and it is all, of course, uh, um, having a, a horrific humanitarian con uh, um, impact. With the UN saying that. One and a half million Gazans have now been displaced. Um, some 700,000 are sheltering in UN facilities uh, in Gaza. And, and Mark, um, we, ha we run a, a clip of President Joe Biden saying there had been some kind of agreement to get aid into Gaza. What do we know about this? Could we see more deliveries? <laughs> Well, President Biden was asked by reporters, as you probably heard in your clip, whether there was progress on this humanitarian pauses issue that um, he, he's, that the U.S. Secretary of State has been pushing Israel for. So far, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, has publicly said there will be no humanitarian pauses until um, those 240 or so hostages that were seized by Hamas on the 7th of October are released. Um, uh, whether or not there is, it is a more nuanced position behind closed doors uh, that has given grounds to President Biden for some optimism on that, we don't know. Um, Antony Blinken, who is shuttling around the region, he goes to Turkey later on today. Uh, he's been with Arab leaders in Jordan yesterday. He's been here in Israel, of course. He's treading a fine line because he's trying to maintain the U.S.'s steadfast support for Israel. Of course, the U.S. is Israel's most important ally um, and is repeatedly said, has repeatedly said that Israel has the right to defend itself. But he's also trying to stay alive to the suffering um, of those uh, people in Gaza. And he's hearing from Arab leaders, and he'll hear from President Erdogan in Turkey as well, strict, uh, very strident calls for an immediate ceasefire. So a very difficult balancing act for the U.S. at the moment. Indeed. Thank you very much. That's our correspondent in Jerusalem, Mark Lowen.